So in the last video, we started talking about combating recessionary gaps, and I told you we were going to be getting into some graphs here, and here they are. So you're going to see that these graphs are going to look very similar to the expansionary or that expansionary policy, the expansionary monetary policy, and then contractionary monetary policy graphs that we've seen in earlier in this chapter. The reason they look the same is because they it acts the same way. Uh, whenever we employ expansionary fiscal policy, what we are trying to do is we're trying to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right. So let's say that we're over here at AD1 and we employ that expansionary fiscal policy. Remember, we are going to be trying to spur on the economy. So we're reducing taxes or we're increasing government spending. And because we do that, it shifts that aggregate demand to the right. So we move from AD1 to AD2. As we move from AD1 to AD2, we see that output increases from Y1 to Y2. So we have an increase in output. Now, because we're down here in this range where we're facing this, basically this flat part of the uh, of that aggregate supply curve, whenever we actually shift from AD1 to AD2 with these expansionary fiscal policies, um, we're going to see that the AS curve is actually elastic at this range and that prices stay the same. So we're still down here at price P0. So if we employ this expansionary uh, fiscal policy here, we shift from AD1 to AD2. Essentially what we're doing is we're increasing output. Because we're increasing output, we need more workers to produce these goods. And we're able to do this without inflating prices. So this is basically a win-win. We can produce more, get more people working, but yet prices aren't going up because the AS curve is elastic at this range. Now, we're doing this in order to reduce that, ex that recessionary gap. So we were at a recessionary gap of YFE minus Y1. We were able to reduce it from this large of a gap to now this large of a gap. So we're reducing that expansion or that recessionary gap. Now, have we gotten to full employment yet? Well, no, not really. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to stimulate the economy again. And we do that again through that expansionary fiscal policy. We're going to be cutting taxes even more or spending more as a government, increased government spending. We do that again and we expand from AD2 to AD3. So we shift that aggregate demand curve to the right again. Our output now increases and it now goes to Y3. But because we're no longer in that perfectly elastic part of that uh, aggregate supply curve, we see that prices actually go up. So we see that prices go up from P0 to P3. So what's going on here? So we do have a little bit of inflation, but real GDP growth is a percentage of, uh, of, of change from Y2 to Y3. So we have a growth in our GDP, a small little minor amount of inflation. And matter of fact, the change from Y2 to Y3, that, that percentage change is actually the percentage change in real GDP, or that is our real GDP growth. And again, we're re actually reducing our recessionary gap. So by moving up from AD2 to AD3, stimulating that economy, we reduce our expansion or, or reduce our recessionary gap. Um, we do have more being produced. Prices go up, but not by that much. Real GDP has gone up. So, but we're not at full employment yet. So what do we do? Well, we employ another round of expansionary fiscal policy, cutting taxes even more or increasing government spending even more to move us from AD3 to AD4. We're trying to expand the economy. We're trying to target this full employment. So we now move to full employment. We have now moved to AD4. The aggregate output has now reached full employment at YFE. This recessionary gap has been eliminated. We no longer have a recessionary gap. And the price level is now at P4. So we see that prices have increased again. We do have another little bit of inflation. Um, but at the same token, we're increasing our output. Prices are now inflated, but in this case, we did not swap growth for uh, of output. Um, even though prices have gone up, the growth in our output is outweighing the growth in our prices at this particular moment. So whenever we reach full employment, we are at the lowest unemployment rate and the highest capacity utilization rate 
without triggering significant inflation. So we're at that point where we're producing as much as we possibly can without having a large amount of inflation. And whenever we're at full employment, that is where we're wanting to target is we're actually wanting to reduce that recessionary gap and go to full employment. We want to move from 81 or 82 to 80 or 83 to 84 to be at full employment. So now that we're in full employment, this is where we want to be. We don't really want to go beyond that. But let's go ahead and go through that hypothetical of what if we stimulate the economy one more time? What if we impose another expansionary fiscal policy one more time and we move from AD4 to AD5? We shift it to the right one more time. So the economy now reaches this Y pot, the total potential amount or the potential capacity to supply these goods and services, the total amount that we can produce as a nation. This is the maximum amount. Prices now increase from P4 to P5. So what we see here is a large increase in prices. Prices increase by a large amount. So what's going on here? We have a very small amount of growth in our real GDP, but yet we have a huge amount of inflation going on. So the benefits of, of more production are overshadowed by inflation. Inflation actually lowers our real wealth that total inflation is now lowering our real wealth. And because of that, this is actually going to auto correct or it's going to self correct back to 84 because people aren't going to be willing to pay those high prices. It's actually going to drop it down because our real wealth is actually being lowered because of those, because of that inflation. 